Hello, Internet. My name is Billy, and this is your Guide to the Ventureverse, a YouTube series in which I look at each episode of the Venture Brothers and give a brief synopsis, point out interesting facts, talk about its place in the greater canon of the show, and finish it off with some personal opinions that I really hope to not debate in the comments. In today's episode, we will discuss Season 1, Episode 2 of the Venture Brothers, Careers in Science. This episode first aired on August 14th, 2004. Let's get into it. Dr. Venture is called upon to investigate the blinking problem light aboard the Gargantua One, a huge sprawling space station built by his father. There they meet the only two people currently inhabiting the space station, Bud Manstrong and Lieutenant Anna Baldovich. Bud Manstrong and Lieutenant Baldovich have a complicated relationship. Sexually repressed Bud can only express his feelings like a boy with a crush, while Lieutenant Baldovich has sexual needs that Bud is not meeting. Meanwhile, Hank and Dean come to the conclusion that the space station is haunted by a phantom spaceman, which it's not, and spend the episode dealing with this non-threat. Meanwhile, Brock and Lieutenant Baldovich have sex, much to Bud Manstrong's chagrin. The sweet cream filling in the middle of the episode, though, is Dr. Venture hitting his head and having a conversation with his father by way of a subconscious delusion. If you've already watched all the Venture Brothers, you probably assume I'm going to talk about movie night, but I've thought long and hard about this and I've decided not to. New channel rule, I'm not going to talk about things that will be referenced in the future, I'm only going to talk about things that reference the past. In other words, I'll talk about the fact that movie night was first mentioned in this episode when it comes up again in the future. Not only do we never see Lieutenant Boldovich's face, but she was actually designed without one. Jackson explains in the art and making of the Venture Brothers that by never designing a face, it would force a storyboard artist never to show it. This is the first we hear of Dean's favorite book series, Giant Boy Detective. Less of a canon thing and more of a continuity thing, it's always bugged me that Doc complains he has to go to the bathroom in the beginning of the episode. Brock, could we speed this up? I really have to go number one. I'm serious. But by the midpoint, just goes in his suit. Oh, sweet mercy, tell me these suits have a collection pouch. The biggest canon moment in this episode by far is that we get to kind of meet Jonas Venture. As far as this episode is concerned, Jonas seems to be an all-around great guy. This version of him is compassionate and caring toward his son. And as his outfits change, we get a small glimpse at all the various cool-ass adventures he's been on. This episode establishes that Doc lives in his father's shadow and could never possibly measure up to him. I'm no prude, but I pretty much hate all the sex stuff in this episode. From the boys thinking Lieutenant Baldovich is phantom spaceman, to Manstrong likening Brock's penis to a place where Smurfs live, to the phallic shape of the rocket. The one thing that saves the joke for me, though, is the emergence of Dr. Venture's above-it-all attitude, which really shows up for the first time in this episode. As Brock and Lieutenant Baldovich heat up on the radio, Dr. Venture practically breaks the fourth wall to say, Oh, come on! He's just as over it as I am. Another great moment of Dr. Venture being above it all happens right here. I'm going with him. It could be dangerous out there. Great. I also really like this tiny moment where Brock describes the Gargantua One. The whole place smells like a new radio. See, my favorite kind of written dialogue is the kind that feels like something a real person would say. And it's super specific statements like this that make Brock feel like a real person and not just a one-dimensional killing machine that frequently fucks. I used to really hate Bud Manstrong as a character. And while he continues to not be my favorite character, I've realized he's sort of an adult variation on the Hank and Dean archetype. He's this guy that's kind of stuck at an immature age because he's grown up isolated from the way that the real world works. I mean, I could just as easily describe Hank and Dean the same exact way. Viewed through that lens, Manstrong is a character that very much belongs in the Ventureverse. As always, thank you for watching and go Team Venture. And if there was some huge glaring thing that I missed in this video, subscribe to my Patreon to see these videos a week early and offer your input before I upload the final product.